Building AI for games is much more than just characters. While it's now being used to improve animation, spot bugs and even detect cheaters, arguably the second most popular application is in generating video game content. One of the biggest challenges any game developer can face is ensuring a lot of variety. Bringing players back to play one more round again and again by giving new spins to an old concept, a level that plays similar but different to the last time you visited it, a different combination of enemies appearing in a particular room or sequence, or giving players the option to gamble, visiting more lucrative but more punishing segments, versus taking a safer route. This pursuit for infinite variation can be seen in the biggest of AAA titles like Diablo and more recently Returnal, but it's also a huge part of recent indie successes like Hades. In essence, all of these games have one source of inspiration, and that is Rogue, a turn-based dungeon crawler released on a variety of personal computers in the early 1980s. Rogue tasked players with burrowing down a series of dungeons to grab the Amulet of Yandor. Because it generated an entirely new set of dungeons each run, any knowledge of the world you've explored before would also no longer be relevant. Rooms would be placed randomly within the space, with corridors that then connected between them. Meanwhile, the locations of monsters and treasures would be assigned after the rooms have been created. While the methods being used were fundamentally quite simple, it meant that no two game runs were the same, and provided players with entirely new challenges in each run. Rogue is one of the earliest examples of what we now call procedural content generation. Algorithms that create data by exploiting design knowledge with a hint of randomness. While Rogue isn't the first example of this ID, it popularized games where players take a run at a fully generated set of levels and challenges, hoping to survive as long as possible and score the highest amount of points. The term roguelike is used to refer to games that embrace these design tropes, as well as sometimes the classical ASCII art aesthetic. While procedural generation benefits players in providing a lot of variation each time you play, it's also hugely beneficial to developers. Rogue's creators Michael Toy and Glenn Wickman were inspired by early text-based adventure games and the fantasy of Dungeons and Dragons, but they didn't want to have to write every possible storyline that could happen, nor did they have the computing power to store them. The only solution was to create algorithms that could generate adventures on the fly for them. Many indie developers and some AAA developers have taken to the idea of Rogue and applied it to other kinds of games. Rogue Lights, as they are called, use the same concept of uh, one life per playthrough and the procedural generation of the environments, but they use it for different genres. The Binding of Isaac takes many of the original ideas of Rogue and turns it into a real-time top-down action adventure, while Spelunky applies them to a platformer. This of course led to a variety of critically acclaimed games, such as Faster Than Light, Nuclear Throne, and Dead Cells. All of these titles are completely distinct from one another, but all share that core DNA from Rogue. Just make sure you don't mix up roguelikes with roguelikes. That's an argument for the genre purist. We don't want to get into that here. Good call, Julian. No sense in us turning the comment section into a flame war now, is there? There's so much more to be done with procedural generation, and we'll have even more to say on that in a future video. So be sure to like, subscribe, and stick around for even more of our History of AI series.